Gentlemen, happy Friday, or as we hoary old campaigners of the disc shop inquisition like to say, fuck all Friday. Remember, folks, nobody works, nobody gets hurt. We're going to do some hydraulic nuggletory fittings. Boring, you say, but necessary. The only thing that can spoil Friday is finding out it's Thursday. <laughs> Fellas don't like that joke. You got a weak sense of humor. Eh? Weak? Weak? No, nothing. Fittings. There's all kinds of different standards, and that's part of the problem. An engineer sees a myriad of different standards, and he decides none of them are good enough. What we need is a unifying standard to rule them all. And he goes off and madly invents a unifying standard that makes somebody else's life absolute misery. We are stuck with national pipe thread, tapered threads, as a legacy of a bygone age. They are terrible for sealing, but they're everywhere. So I'm going to show you how to seal them and why they're designed to not actually seal. So if we look at this pipe coupling, the threads are not parallel like a bolt would be or a regular fitting, they are tapered. They're smaller at the start, wider at the top, as you can see by this one inch national pipe thread tap. Why are they tapered? Well, I'll tell you why. They're tapered so that as you tighten it up, the wedge wedges itself in the female socket tighter and tighter until no oil can leak out. Here's the problem, however, well, there's two problems, is that there is a spiral leakage path built in to the threads. Right at the root, the root of any thread is not going to get filled. You're going to have a, a, a void here, and that oil will be able to creep along and drip out from the root of the threads. In order to mitigate that, we got to put some schmutz in there either Teflon tape or pipe dope or if you find yourself in a dilly of a pickle a piece of plastic bag saran wrap anything to jam something a copper wire anything to jam in the root of that thread so as not to allow a leakage path not to cast pearls before swine but here's a trick worth its weight in gold. We can use differential heating to make sure that a national pipe thread does not leak. What you do is you heat up the female socket and then you jam it in, male side cold, female side hot, you know, but 100, 200 degrees Frankenstein, 100 degrees Celsius. For every 100 degrees Frankenstein, an inch of diameter, a piece of steel will grow one thousandth of an inch. So you get it up 200 degrees, this is an inch, it'll grow two thou. Now when it comes back down to temperature, it shrinks two thou. And that means that your threads are going to be damn near unremovable. However, they will not leak. I'm going to answer for you now a mystery of the universe why these bloody Jesus NPT threads always invariably leak. It is because of constrained expansion. When you tighten this up and it gets constrained on the threads, as it heat cycles, say it warms up, it's constrained on the threads, so it can't grow on the threads. It grows everywhere else, but not on the threads. However, when it cools off, it's not constrained on the threads, so it can shrink down on the threads. And then you start to open up that spiral leakage path. Pipe thread, horrible, but it's a legacy. We're stuck with it. It's cheap, ubiquitous, it's everywhere. Just try and find a gauge that doesn't have pipe thread, bottom stead gauge. It costs you four times as much for a gauge that doesn't have pipe thread. If 
far better than pipe thread is JIC, Joint International Committee. These have a 37 and a half degree taper and a national fine thread. You see these everywhere. And I'm sorry, metric fellas, you're just gonna have to suck it up. It's okay. When someone has a different opinion, it, it's okay. Who cares? It doesn't affect you. It's just an opinion. These are fantastic because there's no O-ring to get hard and crack. These do leak and sometimes the female will split along here if you over tighten them. And sometimes you kind of got to over tighten them. So we, we have here, it just seals metal to metal. That's how it seals. The threads pull it in tight and these are inch standard National Fine Threads. So if we look here at say a dash six, a dash six is a 9 16 UNF thread. So you metric fellas, say in metric rules the world, not in hydraulics, unless you're talking about a Komatsu. Now a Komatsu fitting will look roughly the same, but the flare is at a 45. And it's, I think it's got metric threads as well. You'll come across an oddball once in a while. Now these are measured in dash sizes and the dash size is how many sixteenth of an inch it is. So this is dash six, that's six sixteenths, that's a three eighths fitting. So if somebody calls and says you want a three eighths fitting, that's a dash six JIC. The nomenclature would be M JIC dash zero six, male, JIC, three eighths of an inch. Here, here we have a dash eight, JIC to O-ring boss, ORB male. This goes into a socket. It's been machined especially with a countersink to allow that O-ring to seal. You have to give some room for the crush. The, uh, these are incompressible. That is, they don't, you need to have somewhere for this to go as you crush it down so it seals. If you don't, it extrudes. <coughs> Choking on my Poisson's ratio. <laughs> Reminds me of a little trick. Story time. All these nuglets are bringing back horrible memories. Sitting at the crib, the parts counter, with a, an O-ring in my hand. Filthy, greasy old O-ring. Parts guy looks at me, looks at the O-ring, gingerly plucks it from my own two fingers, pops it in his mouth, chews it around, swishes it like a, like a sommelier of a fine wine, spits it into his hand and then kindly gives it back to me. Says to me, <laughs> that's an 8J4351. Walks off, goes and gets me an 8J4351. I still remember the number. <laughs> I turn around aghast and not knowing what to think. I, <laughs> what? Now this, this is a metric fitting, Whitworth. And you can see it's got a bonded ring. So there's a backup, a bonded steel ring for sealing. These are reusable until they're not, of course. And you can see the difference, just about the same size but the thread form is quite a bit. If you'd focus, you mother, thank you. It's quite a bit coarser thread. But of course, this is a, that would be a dash eight as well. So if you want to, like the parts man, if you want to be able to identify what size it is by sight and feel, there's a very simple way to do that. Very, very simple. You get yourself some of these all of the various sizes, you take them home and you mark down what size it is, dash eight on the back side. And then when you're just dicking around, they're sitting around on your desk or whatever, you just go down and you arrange them by size or not even by size, but you pick one up and you tell, ask yourself what size it is. You just, you're drilling this size so that when you go into a work spot and somebody asks you, you know, you're new, somebody asks you for a dash eight GIC, male, male, uh, this is a union, 
or if they ask you for a branch tee, or if they ask you for a run tee, you know what the hell they're talking about. Dash eight. Dash four union. This is a JIC two O-ring face seal. We had OFRS, we had O-ring boss. This is OFRS. You see these on John Deere tractors is where I have them around here. But they seal, they have a built-in seal. I don't care for them because anything with an O-ring, once the O-ring gets cooked, it's going to leak. So you have a whole machine that you got to go and replace the O-rings on. And the problem with them is once they start leaking past the O-ring, it erodes the O-ring. So you don't have a choice but to take it all apart and replace the O-ring. Whereas JIC, if you have one that's weeping, you give her a little extra twist at the top and it tightens up. Or if you have pipe thread and it's leaking, you're going to take it all apart and put a new O-ring? No! You're going to give it a whole half a turn. So this is a quarter inch swivel pipe thread. So this would be a dash four male NPT and a female swivel. Now this looks like a JIC, but it's not because it's got an inverted cone. That inverted cone will seal on the inside of a pipe thread nipple because there's a chamfer on there. It will not seal. You see, it'll jam in there like a JIC. It will not seal very well. It might for a while on one of these flat stems on a gauge because it sits, instead of being on an angle, you know, on a taper that's wedging in there, it's just sitting on the flat. So you got to watch these. It looks like a JIC, but it's not. It's a, it's a pipe thread. And these O-ring face seals, you can see, here's the female socket. They are also in dash sizes. Dash sizes are how many sixteenths of an inch? Why use fractions instead of decimals? Because in the days before calculators, fractions are far easier to deal with on the regular. You have an inch, you half that. It's a half an inch. You half that. It's a quarter inch. You half that. It's a eighth of an inch. You half that. It's a sixteenth. A thirty-second. A sixty-fourth. A one twenty-eighth. It's like confusers. Once you get the shorthand of it, it's actually quite smart. Also, it works with the Babylonian counting system. You, know, you can count to one hundred and forty-four on your two fingers. I bet you didn't know that, but you can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. So each hand can count to sixty. I don't know. You can count to twelve. And twelve times twelve is 144. Babylonians, man, why do you think there's 360 degrees in a circle? Why is there 60 minutes in an hour? Why is there 60 seconds? in a minute because it's all divisible by 12. It's all divisible by 12. They were counting on their fingers. So this goes back, this fractional, all this newfangled metric bullshit. This is Bronze Age wisdom, man. You don't need to take your socks off to count <laughs> past 10. Speaking of Babylonians, hearken now to our angry owl gear pump. He is not impressed. He's got a flange fitting there. It's plugged off now. So a flange fitting. It's an O-ring face and then it's got two bolts. These are the wrong size. Uh, you got to watch it though because there is a cat flange which is thicker and will not seal the SAE flange. The plug is skookumer, beefier on the cat. Of course, it's got to be, you know, America. Bolts aren't good enough. You got to have the thicker head bolts for the cap. Yeah, so there are flanges and they're different. There's two different styles. One cat, just like Komatsu's got to have their own JIC fitting. It's a JIS, they call it. But standards, pick a standard, any standard.
I got to address this black iron fittings for hydraulics. If you don't know what, you know, you got that greasy old bucket and the, this thing fits, so you're going to put it in there, don't do it. And I'll tell you why. Because generally these black iron fittings are going to be SCED 40. They're rated for 150 PSI max, depending on the size of them. Now there are SCED 80 black iron pipes, but you can see they're far, far, far thicker. They are able to take the pressure. Now you will get away with using a SCED 40 for a while because if their working pressure is rated at 150, that means the burst pressure has to be at least 1,500. So you will get away with it for a little while. However, it will give you a shower of hot ore. Some poor soul in open-toed shoes from HR, a hot shower of oil at the least opportune time. It might even kill somebody. Uh, injection being what it is, hydraulic injection. So do not use SCED 40 black iron pipe. Do not use black iron pipe if you don't know that it is SCED 80. SCED 80 is thick enough to handle most hydraulic. Also, all of the fittings need to be rated for their working pressure. So if you're if you're running at 1,000 PSI, it's a different system than if you're running at 10,000 PSI. So you have to be cognizant that there are some subtleties there. And if you, don't, if you aren't aware of the subtleties, you're going to kill somebody. It's no joke. Use the right fittings. Now that old parts guy, he got me good. How could he tell by flavor what O-ring that was? Was it a Jedi mind trick? across time and space and the parts room table, counter, whatever you call it. <laughs> he knew something I didn't. Some manufacturers do something special to their O-rings. It took me a while, and I figured it out eventually. So thanks for watching. <laughs> Keep your dick in advice.